terrific wings, Pascal Siakam and OG Ananobi. We know how the other teams that got those players made out. New York and Indiana, they, they were terrific in helping those teams. How did the Raptors make out when all was said and done? Both of those players were upcoming free agents. It was difficult to judge the trade market. But with that said, the Raptors were able to get draft picks plus young, exciting talent like Canadian R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel quickly. But let's factor in the biggest key here. It's Scotty Barnes. He is their future. He's their untouchable. He's who that front office feels great about as their cornerstone moving forward. Love Barnes. Love him. Here are the five for the Raptors. Barnes and Pirtle make up the inside pair. Emmanuel quickly out there with Dick, and it's Barrett at the small forward. The professor passes to Miracle Man, and they're moving it up. Pass to Barnes. Here's the break. And the dunk to finish it off. A ah, beauty. And what started it all, terrific anticipation on the defensive end. And that's exactly how you get yourself into transition. The gamble pays off. Let's check in with our reporter, David Aldridge. Thank you, Kevin. Caught up with Coach Charles Lee. Coach had praise for one of the opponents tonight, the versatile Scotty Barnes. He told me Scotty's somebody that can do it all. He can score, pass, rebound, and defend multiple positions. That's rare for a player his age. So, Kevin, Scotty's still growing as a player. Thank you, David. Nice job capturing the moment on the AT&T 5G Slam Cam. Barrett kicks to Barnes. Here's Dick, quickly with a wide open look. And he's good on the three ball. And Shams, nothing gets a workout like your phone. We're here, we're talking NBA, we're watching this game. We got this great group here courtside. You've got two phones working, and I'm sure there's a third hidden in your bag. Can you estimate how many texts do you send and receive a day? Is there even a number we can put with that? Kevin, how many texts do you get a day related to NBA info? Are you coming at me? You know the job is. It's, it's hundreds of messages flooding my phone on a daily basis. And the screen time usually in busy season. Oh! And how about that? What a sensational finish. Yeah, you you got to be able to get some hang time to do that one. Toronto's gone one or two from long range in the first quarter. Barrett, wide open, he fires. Misses the three. And they had some boxed coverage that turned into no coverage. They blow the whistle just as he gets it off. That's two points for the Janum. Climbing to the fifth spot on the board. And I think for the Hornets, they just kind of burst out of the gate here with some fire. Feeling disrespected by pundits who overlooked them as a top team. Barrett for three. That one's in his first bucket of the game. He's one for two. Hey, Shams, I know you cover the league like no one else, but I've seen your jump shot. You have a sweet J. Did you? You must have played organized ball, I'm assuming. I played a little bit in high school, Kevin, but once I got cut in high school, that's when I knew my career path would have to trend into what I'm doing now, into writing and covering the NBA. But listen, I have a lot of confidence in my jump shot watching the players <laughs> like Steph Curry shoot the basketball. I'm not trying to give any comparisons, but I do love to shoot the ball. That is the one thing I know I can do decently. Yes, I know. I love your answer. <laughs> not much else, but I can shoot. <laughs> Here's the teardrop. That one goes in for him, too, making it look easy. He's now four for four. And of the last six baskets, five have come on the interior. This is just smash mouth physical basketball, guys. A three from Quickly. And again, Toronto with the triple. Listen, if you give Emmanuel Quickly a look from three, there's never hesitation. Here's Mr. Incredible. And there's the foul. It was on Mr. Incredible. That's his first foul. And really just a great play to sacrifice his body and take the charge. And looking at that replay again, just a big time block right there. And, and making a statement right away, letting them know they won't get any easy ones when he's around. Thomas checked in for the wizard. Pass to Dick. 
Over in the corner, Barnes. Toronto working the ball around now. Boy, you find a lane and you attack the rim with ferocity, quickly doing work. For Charlotte, they've gone eight of eight. What a hot start for them. How expansion is coming, Shams. Is the league ready, in your estimation, for some more cities and new teams? The NBA seems to be ready. I, I think I'm ready. Kevin, are you ready? Because the last expansion was, what, 20 years ago? That's the longest wait for this league since it began. And so I think Adam Silver and this league are going to take their time and really figure out exactly where they want to expand to. But the question is, Kevin, are you ready? I am always ready. I know the league is looking even overseas or even maybe south of the border for a possible new entrance. But the league has got so much talent on the bottom half of these rosters. I definitely think it's time. And there's a great appetite, a great desire for a lot of these cities, not only in the States, but also abroad, like you said, to go bring in an NBA team to their city and bring some of the talent, the marquee names to their city. Oh, it'll be terrific. Dick in the corner. Back to quickly. Elbow shot is on the way. And again, it's Toronto converting. I'll tell you, despite this guy's strong play in this period, they're still behind. Someone else has got to step up. Here's the professor. Plays it up off the glass. The professor's got eight points. And this game already taking shape as an offensive battle. Well, the fans love it. Coaches may not like the lack of defense, but boy, the rules promote scoring, no doubt. And the timeout called by Darko Royakovic. He's going to have a discussion here on the sideline. Some changes for Toronto. Abaji's checked in, and it's Bruce Brown in for Dick. Hornets on defense now. They lead by four. Brown outside. Just five on the clock. The Raptors need to get a shot up. From 17 feet out. And there's Mitchell. That's good on the assist by Brown. That's their third straight make off an assist. You communicate so much with NBA GMs. You talk with owners. You talk with personnel people. Uh, you know, knowing what they... Of importance, certainly. And how well connected are they within the organization? How are they building their own front offices in their own buildings? But their thirst for information, their ability to use information to strategize, that is something that occurs every single day. Because if you know something is happening with a specific team, that could shape how you want to strategize your team moving forward. He get the sense of the impressive reach of Olenek important on that dunk. I mean, he makes plays. Raptors trail by three. Mitchell outside. Abaji the pass to Brown. Shoots from the elbow, and there are the Raptors with another bucket. Yeah, Bruce Brown's got tremendous touch in that mid-range area, doing work. Here's Swanson. Good, and the assist goes to Thomas. Big Smooth got his third basket of the night. And defensively, they are on their heels every time the ball comes inside. Pass to Mitchell. Here's Barrett. Rebound by the kid. And the way he was able to reach out towards that release had an impact. Well, no question. He altered that shot. And most of the time, that's just as good as blocking it. Here is Mr. Incredible. Barrett covering. Shot clock at five. Here's Mr. Incredible. Oh, that was worth the price of admission. Wow, and that sort of showmanship is just deflating right now to a team trying to get back into a game like this. Oh, Trey, that is definitely an emphasis jam. A big apostrophe or exclamation point, maybe even a question mark. The shot by Mitchell, no good. It could go. The basket's coming early and off. Let's get your take, guys, on the scoring breakdown for the Hornets. Right away, they showed us they weren't going to shy away from the mid-range game, and it's proving to be an effective tool for them. And the other thing that's working for them tonight, getting out into the open floor, a lot of the damage coming in transition. So on the floor for Toronto to start the second quarter, they've got Bruce Brown. Barnes out there with Kelly Olenek, and it's Mitchell, and it's Abaji in at the three, the small four. 
Here's Barnes. And they call the foul, so he's got the and one chance here to make it a three-point play. And we saw some players banged up uh, down the stretch last season, Shams. I'm told that there was a focus on maybe allowing some more flexibility in physicality. It definitely upped the intensity some, and I think that's what the fans want. But there are going to be some trade-offs, and that includes the free throw rates, that includes game time, and in the long haul, adding some more physicality and adding some more attention to detail defensively and allowing defenders to play more and defend more. That should be good for the game. Yeah, those were good trends, I would agree. Mitchell outside. Pass to Brown. Takes the three. His shot is good, making him a perfect two for two from the floor. That's Bruce Brown getting something in rhythm right there. That's nicely done. Here's the kid. Covered by Mitchell. Here's Big Smooth. Now Richards. Olenek with the steal. To Abaji. Toronto working the ball around now. And a fast break now for the Hornets. And that one's good. Richard. And that's how to make an impact with defense. Once the steal is made, you know they're going to be scattered. Now here's Olinick. Last time out, he had 13 points. Olinick sets a screen for Brown. Lock at six. Puts up a deep three. The rebound by Richard. And when you are as good a shooter as he is, you have to have the confidence to take that shot. It might not always fall. And for most guys, I think you only want to take that shot if you've hit a few in a row. That is absolutely a heat check. Hey, Shams, you're uh, always on the pulse of those lead-changing trades. We certainly saw some impactful ones last season. Across the board, the Pacers, the Mavericks, they made deep runs, and they did so on the back of some big trade deadline moves. Those are transformations that excite all of us to witness. Even New York getting OG Ananobi at the trade deadline. This is a league that's built on capitalizing at the moment and striking when the iron's hot, and we saw multiple teams do that just last season. That trade deadline was phenomenal for those teams you mentioned. Really impactful. Shots good by Grace. That makes it 10 of their last 12 coming from inside the paint. Right wing and stolen by Thomas. It's time now to hear from our Hall of Fame reporter, David Aldridge. What's the latest, David? Kevin, the Raptors are rebuilding with purpose. Coach Darko Ryakovich said, we're doing a good job at the start of this process, selecting the right people that care and are very committed to each other. That's a good baseline to build on. Kevin, slowly, the pieces are falling into place. David, you're so right. He is great at developing those young players. Unbelievable explosion. Shows a great burst to the rim and extends over the taller defender. Raptors trail by eight. Pass to Brown. And there's the foul. It goes on Mr. Incredible. That's foul number two for him. Well, that's his second foul. Does he take a more cautious approach here the rest of the half? And a little under three and a half minutes elapsed in this second quarter of play. Now, here's Brown. Guarded close. Here's Pirtle. The shot's good. Brown making the play. Brown's got his third assist on the night. Shams, with as often as you've interacted with front offices all over the NBA, have you noticed any changes with how franchises operate with both the players and the media and that relationship and where it may be headed? Everything has to be more specialized now in the organization, but you're seeing true partnerships develop with teams and their players.